since there's so much overlap between Unit 1 of Macro that we did in September and Unit 1 of Micro that we're starting now, I don't want to go through all of the concepts, but I do want to reiterate some points that will be particularly useful as we move on to this second half of the course. One of the things that you're going to have to work with more in depth is going to be some of the comparative and absolute advantage stuff. You know, looking at it maybe in a slightly different context. So, pulling an example from the macro exam that we were kind of fighting with the other day, um, I'm going to show you how you can figure this out. Comparative and absolute advantage. If we're talking about absolute advantage, we're looking at who can produce the most stuff, the most of a particular product with a given amount of resource. Now, why are we limiting the resources? You look at it and you go, well, how is that a real world example? Because countries have different resources. It's like you're doing something mathematical and you have to have like terms or you have to have you know, two things that you're adding together with a common denominator. If they don't really mesh, if they're not really comparable, then you can't really look at it in terms of trading possibilities and who ought to be doing what. So for the sake of comparison, we put them on equal terms with whatever resource is most valuable for producing the product. So for absolute advantage, we're just looking at who makes the most stuff. Largest quantity with given resource. Okay. Who makes more? They have the, the absolute advantage. That's why it's absolute. It's very clean cut. Comparative advantage is different because now, you know, comparative implies that we're looking at something that is relative. What you're actually comparing is the opportunity cost between two different countries for what they can produce in terms of another product. So this one, largest quantity, over here, opportunity cost. We want the country with the lowest opportunity cost to be the producer. In other words, you want the country that's giving up the least because then they're doing it relatively cheaper in terms of their other alternatives. Now, the problem that we were dealing with in class the other day is looking at wine and cheese production. And it says in the problem with a given amount of resource. You know, we can look at this in terms of, say, land use, for example. A given amount of land, what can you do with it? or given amount of labor. There, there are different things we could throw in here, but just know that you're limiting resources in both countries to the same degree so that they're kind of on the same terms. Now, looking at these numbers for absolute advantage, all you have to say is, where are they bigger? Absolute advantage in wine, United States. Absolute advantage in cheese, France. Those are bigger numbers. That's the easy part. You should never miss that because that should be pretty clean cut. Now, to figure out comparative advantage, this is where you have to look at the two products relative to each other and then compare that for the two countries. So, for example, if we're talking about the United States and we want to continue along the same line, what is the opportunity cost? One bottle of wine is equal to two pounds of cheese. One wine, two cheese. So what is the opportunity cost of one unit of cheese? Well, all you have to do is divide. One cheese equals a half unit of wine. Okay, that's for the US. Given the numbers that we have available to us. Now, what do we get for France using these numbers? One wine equals 60 divided by 10, six cheese. If we go the other way, one cheese equals one divided by six, one sixth unit of wine. So, who has 
has a comparative advantage in wine. We want to see who's giving up less. So we want to look at the wine numbers first. Well, for the United States, they're only giving up two pounds of cheese for every bottle of wine. In France, they're giving up six. Lowest opportunity cost for wine is right here. So the United States has an absolute and a comparative advantage in wine production. USA. USA. Okay. Um, now, if we look at it with cheese, who has a comparative advantage in cheese? For the United States, if one cheese is equal to half a unit of wine versus France, where one cheese is equal to one-sixth a unit of wine, well, they're giving up a, a small fraction of what the United States would give up here. Vive la so, we have an absolute and a comparative advantage in wine for the United States in this example. We have an absolute and a comparative advantage in cheese in this example. So what should they do? The U.S. should produce wine, France should produce cheese, and they should trade. Now, how can you determine if the terms of trade are acceptable to each of these nations? Your terms of trade are going to tell you how many units of one product there the countries would be willing to trade for another. Well, if the United States could make, on its own, two units of cheese for each unit of wine, and they're making the wine, then they probably want more than two units of cheese for it, because that's better than they can get if they produce it themselves. And the same thing for France. They're going to want to do better than one-sixth here, okay? And that's how, even if a country has an absolute advantage, even if the U.S. had an absolute advantage in both products, they could still possibly benefit from terms of trade that would give them a lower opportunity cost for the one that they're not producing. So, absolute advantage, you just look at who has a bigger number with, you know, limited resources to put them in the same terms. Comparative advantage is lower opportunity cost, and this is how you would figure it out, one product in terms of the other.